Hi there, we're going to go over how to find percentiles from a normal distribution when we know the mean and the standard deviation. And we'll go over two types of problems. The first is where we have a number from the distribution and we want to know what percentile that number is. And then the other way around where we have a percentile in mind and we want to know what number has that percentile. And we'll go over how to do this using a standard normal table, as well as using technology with a calculator that's made to mimic the TI-83 and is pretty similar to a lot of other TI models. All right, let's get into the problem. We're given that the mean and the standard deviation of SAT scores is 1060 and 217 respectively. That means the mean is 1060, the standard deviation is 217. We might as well just go ahead and write that information down. The mean is 1060 and the standard deviation is 217. Our first question is to find the percentile of the score 12. Remember what percentiles are. In order to find the percentile of 1,200, we need to find what percent of SAT scores are less than or equal to 1,200. So if we picture this on a standard normal curve, perhaps a score of 1,200 is maybe right around here. Now, if that's the case, we just need to calculate what percent is below that point on the normal curve, and that is the percentile. So the question just becomes, how do we figure out where on this normal curve 1,200 is? Is it here, or is it maybe over here? And the way we do that is just calculate a z-score. The z-score will tell us how many standard deviations above the mean 1200 is. From that, we'll be able to figure out what percent of data is below it, and thus we'll know the percentile. So let's write out the z-score. I'll just denote it z1200. And the z-score, you should know this formula by heart, is the difference between our data value, 1200, and the average, the average is 1060, and then divide this difference by the standard deviation. So we divide it by 217, and this is equal to 0.65. So we'll write approximately 0.65. So 1200 is about 0.65 standard deviations above the mean. If we look at our normal curve, that might be uh, maybe right around there. And so now to find the percentile, we just need to calculate how much area is below that point. We can do that with a calculator or with the table. Let's check out the table first. To look this up in a table, we've just got to find our z-score of 0.65. So first, I start in the leftmost column to find the row that has the 0.6 z-scores. And then I've got to pick the right column here that gives us that hundredths place of 5, since our z-score was 0.65. And you'll see that's right here. This is the column for a hundredths place of 5. And so what is the area that corresponds to 0.65? It's this one here. 0.7422. That means about 74.22% of the data is less than the score that we're looking at of 1200, and so this is about the 74th percentile. Now I've busted out the imitation TI-83 calculator. Let's use the calculator to find the percentile, just like we did before. Again, the percentile, it's telling us what percent of the data is less than a score of 1,200. Or, on a standard normal curve, it's telling us the percent of the data that's less than or equal to 0.65. So, over here on my calculator, I'm going to go to second distributions. So now I have access to all these nice statistical distributions. And I want the normal CDF. This is called the normal cumulative distribution function. It lets me know how much area accumulates up to a certain point. 
The first thing I'll put in is the lower bound. In theory, we want our lower bound to be negative infinity. We want to capture all possible data that's less than a z-score of 0.65. Uh, but we can't put that in on this calculator. If we just put in, uh, put in negative 99, though, that is pretty much going to give us the same exact thing because there's barely any data at all that's more than 99 standard deviations less than the mean. So that's the lower bound. The upper bound, well, we want to go all the way from the end and then up to our z-score of 0.65. On the normal curve, that looks like this. We're going from the left end all the way up to our value of 0.65. So for the upper bound, I put 0.65 and enter. And there you see we get 0.742, which is pretty close to what we got in the table. That tells us that the score 1200 is about the 74th percentile. Now for the second question where we've switched the piece of information we have. Now we don't know what the score is. This is what we know. Our friend scored in the 95th percentile. Okay, we know the percentile. We want to know what is his SAT score. How do we solve this problem? Well, let's think about Z scores again. Whatever my friend's SAT score is, let's just call it X. I know that if I take his score and subtract the mean, which is 1060, and then divide by the standard deviation in order to calculate a z-score, this should be some number such that 95% of the data is less than or equal to it. And on a standard normal curve, that might be somewhere around here. 95% of the data is less than or equal to that score. So all I have to do then is figure out what z-score has 95% of the data less than or equal to it. Then I can put that number right here and solve the equation for x. So let's head down to the table and see what z-score has 95% of the data. Now we're just looking through these values that tell us areas and we're looking for 0.95. And the closest we get is right here between 1.64 and 1.65. So the z-score we'll use is halfway between 1.64. So let's head right back on up and write that into our equation. His z-score must be 1.645 because we see a z-score of 1.645 would be right in between these two values, which would put us right at the 95th percentile. So then all we have to do is solve this equation for x. And I'll go ahead and bust the calculator back out in this case. How are we going to find x? We've got to take 1.645, multiply it by 217, and then we'll just have to add 1,060 to both sides. And we see that x, our friend's SAT score, must have been about, I guess we'll use the approximately sign here, about 1,417. That's what his SAT score had to have been to be the 95th percentile. All right, now how could we solve this problem using the calculator a little bit more? It's pretty slick how we can solve this with the calculator. Again, we'll go to second distribution, and I want the inverse normal distribution because now I know an area, and I want to see what score has that area beneath it. Now, we could go ahead and just put in the area, 0.95, because this is the 95th percentile, and then hit enter. And that's going to give us the z-score that corresponds to that area. This is the value that we got from our normal table. And then we could solve the equation for x just like before. However, we could also put in the specific information for our nor uh, normal curve, the one that has a mean of 1060 and standard deviation of 217, we could put that into the calculator and then we wouldn't even have to solve this equation. Let me show you how that works. If we go to inverse normal, again, I can put in the area, but if I want, I could also put in the parameters for our normal distribution. The mean is 1060, so I could put that in next. 
and then I put in the standard deviation, 217. Now it will give me not the standardized value, the z-score, it will give me the actual value from my normal distribution. I hit enter, and I get about 1,417. So that's it. That's how you solve these sorts of problems, finding a percentile from a normal distribution with a table and with technology if you know the mean and the standard deviation. Hope that helped. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or other lesson requests. Feeling the stratosphere coming down soon